Okay, so we talked about the first mandate being alert. The second mandate is a powerful one. It's my favorite one, actually. It's standing firm in the faith. Now, you probably have not heard of a gentleman named Robert Ziegler, who was a teacher in Nebraska, but this is a man that the Holy Spirit got a hold of. You see, he recognized that his role was to pass on knowledge to kids, but he also believed, and, and, and understandably so, that the fear of, of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And he recognized that if he was to do things right and not grieve the Holy Spirit, he needed to teach these kids the things of the Lord. Well, he represented him be himself before the school board and he lost. He lost his job. But he gained so much more because he recognized he could not do something that was against God. He had to stand firm in what he believed. And he believed strongly. It reminds me in the book of Acts chapter 4 where Peter and, um, and, and John are depicted as preaching the gospel. And the Sanhedrin did, did, did not like this. And they were arrested, uh, they were flogged, but they said, hey, we trust in the Lord and we have to say it because it is the truth. And that salvation comes through no other name except that of Jesus Christ. So that is what's important. So whatever you say doesn't matter. We are standing firm in what we believe. Now, let's be, let's be clear here. Peter and John walked with Jesus. You and I have never walked with the physical Jesus. So it takes a little bit more because we are going on with a blind faith, right? Well, it's not blind at all because there is so much evidence to point us to the truth of Jesus Christ. But that's another story. We're talking about standing firm in the faith. In order for you to stand firm in the faith, you need to know what you believe. Have you ever come to the place where you actually sat down and said, what is it that I believe? And when you, when you do that, did you ever ask yourself the question, why do I believe it? Well, that's really where the rubber meets the road, isn't it? It's the why. Now, it's really important for us to understand that when you make a determination of what we believe, you have to ask yourself this question, is this belief system my belief system, my faith system, or is it someone else's? Now, what's a common theme today is, for example, if I walk on the street and I ask people, what is it you believe? I, I would say 90 to 95% of the people can tell me readily, well, I believe this. But if I ask them that question, why? They don't know what to say because their belief system is somebody else's. Parents, friends, or today, which is very prevalent, the professors at university. We have never actually made it our own, and we've never, therefore, put that faith to the test. Well, I want to challenge you today to put your faith to the test. Put it on trial, just like Mr. Ziegler was on trial. Put it on trial, because I am absolutely confident that when you do, it's going to reveal to you something extraordinarily powerful. You see, when we put something on trial like that and we start asking the questions, it's like, it's like taking a chair. And, and when you look at that chair, you make a determination from afar, it looks like a chair. Okay. Then I walk over to that chair and I start shaking that chair. And I'm saying, hmm, this seems sturdy. I think it's going to hold me. But it's not until you sit in that chair that your faith and your belief system is realized. You got to sit in the chair, right? That's your test. That's what I'm asking you to do. Whatever it is you believe today, put it to the test. You know, I know my Jesus, I know who he is, and I'm very confident that if you put him on trial, well, he's going to be guilty of exactly who he said he was, the Son of God. That's what I believe. But again, this is your life. This is your foundational belief system. You need to recognize what yours is before uh, you, you move forward. That's extraordinarily important. By standing firm in the faith, you recognize that this is my life. This is the foundation I'm building it on. And everything takes a traje trajectory from that standpoint. So this foundational piece of standing firm in the faith is essential to your growth. Now, in order for you to do this, you got to have the right tools. Right? So as a believer, I want to give you a few of these tools. Number one, you want to communicate with your creator through prayer and ask him to open your eyes to truth. 
You want to purposely read the Bible to gain wisdom, not just head knowledge. You know, uh, I remember, I, I love... I, I love lawns, right? I love green lawns. I, I used to love cutting my lawn. And it's it's kind of like taking a lawnmower and cutting this beautifully straight line, then turning around and cutting another one the other way, and so forth. And that's what a lot of us do with the Word of God. We say, okay, I got to read Acts 1 today. And we go, vroom, vroom. we mow down the words, and then we check a box and say, I read them. But no, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about having the words penetrate your soul, penetrate your heart, penetrate your mind, so that you will recognize the power in the Word of God. And it'll become part of you so that when your back is against the wall, that's what's going to come out. That which you've placed in. We need to meditate on the word. You know, ponder it quietly and just think on it. Really, really let it soak in and understand the context from which we're reading as well. And not simply pulling a verse out to make us feel good, but knowing why that verse is there in the first place. And then, this is one of the great challenges, because I know people that can quote Genesis 1 to Revelation 22, but they have no idea what it really says. We need to apply it to our lives. When we read it, we need to soak it in, and then we need to let it come out. Because at the end of the day, our goal is to live it out loud. Live it out in power. The Word of God is not there for us to get gain head knowledge. It's there for us to impact lives. That's what we were called to do. And if we do that, if we do that, we're going to see our families changed. We're going to see communities changed, our churches changed, our world changed. But you know where the change really starts? It starts with you. Stand firm in the faith and know why you believe what you believe.